So welcome everyone. This is a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town manager's office. Um, I want to thank everyone on this group for their hard work and their dedication to all of the grants that are going out. And um, I will make Julianne the host and wish you a great meeting. Thank you, Angela. Okay, so I will start with our statement. And for that, um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner on the uh, via via zoom, which is posted on the town website. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post the uh, video of this uh, Zoom on the town website, amherstma.gov, uh, and an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So now I will move to our roll call. And... Uh, Rachel. I'm here. Excellent. Robin. You have to I have to hear your audio, Robin. Yeah. Thank you. Eleanor. Here. Christy. Here. Matt. Here. Excellent. All right. So uh, the goal this evening and thank you all for being here um really appreciate it uh we're, we're in in good shape we've been doing well with our time box approach so the immediate goal is to take care of the initial um review of the remaining grants uh, we do need to go back to gallery a3 which i think we'll do um at the end because we have christy now so we'll go through all of the others and um from this, you know, as we've been going along in our discussions, we've been noting where, you know, we feel that we um, have people who are meeting our guidelines, have others who are, you know, we have concerns or that simply don't. Um, so we have pretty good clarity on on all of that, and uh, we've been noting down kind of the amount of of grant that was discussed, and we're keeping a running tally. So, as Matt shared in a little more detail during our last meeting. Um, where we'll go from tonight is he and I will work on all of the information that we have and um, between now and Wednesday, we will, you know, basically get a balanced budget in and be able to share that with each of you not to be discussed until the meeting Wednesday. And then from there, uh, we can we can fine tune and uh, ideally be able to come to a, a vote on the on the collective whole of everything. So does anyone have any questions about that? We can just. When you say collective whole, Julian, do you mean that um, so that the numbers still add up in the end based on yeah. individual? OK, the numbers need to add up. And frankly, if we had to take a vote for every grant that we had, <laughs> it would take so much time to do the roll call. So we we really need to try to to vote on the the collective whole um, at, at once rather than bringing each to a vote. Okay. So uh, if there are no other questions, then I need to figure out in my document where I am. Okay, and pick up where we left off. Uh, and just real quick, any other questions? Are we ready to go? Okay, and Rachel, do you do you have my uh, my timekeeping again, please? Oh, awesome. you can't see my phone. Okay, but here it is. Well, okay. and that's that's yeah. something just for all of you. I'm not I'm I'm not really looking at at you. I'm all over the place trying to pull these details together. So especially if someone could watch, you know, uh, uh, participants, if if there are any attendees. I don't think we've had any so far for any of the deliberation meetings, but I wouldn't be able to see if someone joined, even though I'm the host. So, um, and don't don't hesitate to holler if if you are if I'm not seeing you wave or something to get my attention. 
All right. So the next grant is um, being presented by uh, the Downtown Amherst Foundation. And uh, it will occur over several dates in 2023. And uh, it will be performed at the at the Drake. It's a multi event collaboration with Amherst Regional High School um, and their community and it is free to the public. Um, they uh, are asking us for $2,500 and expect to serve about 1000 uh, community members collectively. Um, we scored this as I have to get to my place here as well uh, as a 2.57 so uh, it was definitely a, a strong proposal and uh, so this organization um, they've secured space at the Drake for several dates and they are collaborating with uh, the arts department yes yes did somebody I'll keep going then. Hi, Cody. Um, uh -huh. so where was I? Um, yeah. Thank you. So there are they will have two cabaret nights in in January, two jazz evenings in the spring, and a fundraiser for the orchestra, along with several other evenings that are in the pipeline. All of the dates events will be open to the public and free for all attendees. Um, to operate at any given event, the Drake costs about uh, $1,200 for production needs, staff and general overhead. And they're happy to work with the public high school um, to highlight the incredible talent of our students. Um, but they're saying if it's a, but it is a fiscal loss to, to the organization so they needed us to consider a grant to help mitigate those costs and allow them to do more free programming uh, with the schools and the community so basically uh, the the plan is to to bring in amherst students music students and give them a, a venue to perform several different kinds of music and also uh, to to have additional outreach by doing some some fundraising I guess to offset these costs and maybe even raise more so is there anyone who'd like to champion this event um I I like to champion it great Did you have anything more you'd like to add, Cody? Um, this has been, um, I know this was my favorite application just due to the fact that they want to expose the youth to a out side venue and not the same old auditorium gym. It's good to have that outside its exposure. I couldn't agree more. I think it's I think it's fantastic. I think there's no substitute for live performance and the drake also is is a it's a community um venue right and yet because many of the events have been paid events i don't know how accessible it's really truly been to everyone in the community and i, I think it will bring a tremendous amount of community benefit and frankly i'd fund the entire thing if at all possible and perhaps yeah. prioritize it even beyond some other music events at the same time you know the kids are learning which is great and we have some amazing high caliber musicians that we still want to bring to the community you know just because of the amazing talent that they bring um so i don't know to the extent that we can it's, it's it is a large ask but 
Mm. I just want to, um, yeah, I just want to support everything that's been said. Those are really great points about the program. Uh, also, that the Drake last last year in its first year in, in existence um, was an incredible supporter for a lot of our grantees as they came in and um, they were basically had free use of the space with like almost no overhead costs. So um, it is a nonprofit organization, you know, downtown in the town, but um, they've been operating at pretty significant loss on a lot of their performing stuff. So I think whatever we can do to support them as an organization, as well as, you know, as Cody said, it's a really great learning environment for um, the student musicians and artists. I'd be comfortable putting it at the 2,500, knowing that that's, that's going to be hard for us to do. Um, but I'd, I'd like to see, you know, if there are other things that, you know, we look at and maybe, maybe a Justin said, and unless, is everyone comfortable with taking that approach? Yeah. Do you yes. have your hand up, Christy? Yes. yes. Okay. Excellent. We're all good? Thank you. I just muted myself. I think I'm getting my walkie talkie controls back mixed up. Sorry. Uh, next one, we probably will want to fully support as well. Uh, this is um, the Emily Dickinson Museum um, and their Amherst Area Community Day. It's um, held annually. So this will be this, uh, I guess it was this uh, Saturday, uh, December 10th. So it has happened. And they are, their entire budget is $2,500 and they're asking us for the 2,500. It was at the Emily Dickinson Museum. They expected to serve 250 people. Um, and overall, we rated this as um, a 2.36. Uh, uh, they did, uh, one person has commented noting that the second floor is not accessible, um, mm. but they, they might be adding elevators or ramps. And, and to that, I, I haven't reviewed their recent uh, renovation plans, so I don't know if anything's changed with this. So the overview is that this is uh, an annual honor that celebrates Dickinson's birthday in December and celebrates the life and works of of Emily Dickinson with special programming. So now after two years of closure and only having online program, they were delighted to welcome local community back in person uh, for an open house and to reestablish this event. Uh, offerings and were to include guided access to the new restored spaces, new information about uh, Dickinson and her family's role in 19th century Amherst, as well as on-site activities for visitors of all ages. The, the museum uh, re also recently finished a reinterpretation to include greater emphasis on acknowledgement on acknowledging the family's prosperity and privilege uh, the domestic uh, labor staff for the family uh, understood and themes related to health uh, to the health and disability uh, particularly in reference to Dickinson's mother so uh, did anyone happen to attend this event I didn't attend, Julian, <clears throat> excuse me, but I did one of their um, um, tours in preparation for it. Um, and mm -hmm. I think I can vouch for the content that, that you've just described. Um, so, yeah, so that that's all covered in the tour. Excellent. I did not include, uh, attend this event in particular. And just to kind of get an idea of the budget, it, um, they they wanted to help underwrite the admission fees, which were generally sixteen dollars per adult, as well as special um, day of program activities such as music performance, crafts, etc. Um, wish kind of wish they maybe spoke to that more, but uh, I'm sure they did a great job. That's an interesting way of presenting it, right? Because if you're doing a um, opening event, it's then it's like the admission even relevant, or is it just going to be? Mm. I mean, if 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 you're asking that question in particular, but it, I don't know. Yeah, I, um, I don't know that the budget is really truly accurate as far as 
I think the event budget was a lot larger than 2,500. Um, so I think they, they could have done a better job with detailing, you know, what the day included and, and the budget, but I don't know that this is something we would, you know, for this organization hold, you know, against. Oh, uh, Robin, yeah. Um, two things. The second floor is not accessible, but you can view it on an iPad. So I guess they've set up cameras or something because mm. um, it's an historical building. My, and it probably doesn't, isn't relevant because there's budget lines, but the museum has a lot of money and the college has a lot of money and yet the council is offsetting some of that. And I guess I have some issues with that, but at the same time, mm. it, kids probably wouldn't get to participate in this if it's not otherwise funded because there's other budget lines, so. I think you bring up valid points. Cody. Yeah, um, I I think we are getting feedback. Somebody, if you're not speaking, please try to mute. Um, uh, yeah, it's such a build. It's a huge issue. And no, this isn't a place, but if you have tons of money, why wouldn't you be a DA? Complain, but that's not the conversation. But I would say maybe a part or since you know they do have money, but yeah, as you said. The community wouldn't be able to participate if it wasn't funded. So. Well, Cody, I do think that accessibility is what what we're talking about, and I think bringing up that you know the museum does have a lot of funding along with Amherst College and. Uh, my my question is, I would I would assume that as far as the first floor, it's considered ADA compliant. Is that that correct? And um, as to you know why they haven't made the second floor accessible, you know I I guess I need to understand ADA law better um, about general access to get into a building, but not you know, full access. Um, We're at time, just so you know, but go ahead with. No, I will just quickly go I'm curious about that because as I knew, but I guess not. <laughs> So, so perhaps the question too is, um, as far as the actual event, you know, was it mainly on the first floor? You know, if, if the, this particular event occurred in an area that was accessible, then, then I don't think that there's any, any con concern here about the guidelines. Right. So we might need to, to ask that. So since we're at time, I will. You muted. Thank you. I, I need help with that. I truly do. Because this walkie talkie thing, I'm trying to be very um, uh, aware of this feedback. Uh, okay, so um, the next grant is... Uh, so do we have a conclusion on that one? Sorry. We, we don't. We have to come back okay. to it. Got it. 
uh, that this is why I didn't start the last two at the end of the last meeting with three minutes. Yeah. So the uh, Nilum Becca project uh, is uh, their grant is for their 10th annual. Um, oh, I was going to say potluck, which is wrong. Um, how do you say this? Pokum Tuck? Pokum Tuck, thank you. Homelands Festival uh, that will occur August 5th and 6th. Uh, hopefully in 2023, not 2003, at Unity Park in Turner's Fall, Massachusetts. Uh, it's got a rather large budget of almost uh, $34,000, and they're asking uh, us for 500 towards that. They expect to serve 6,000 people, and uh, collectively, we scored this very high as a 293 and the comments here are that it's a very small ask and another person said Turner's Falls. Um, before going into this, I do think this is one of these um, events that that is uh, does have, you know, regional nexus, right? So uh, the Pocomtuck Homelands Festival, it's uplifting an educational festival, honors the heritage and continued presence of tribal nations of the Northeast and it's returning for the 10th year. Um, it, uh, takes place at a site historically and culturally important to the indigenous people from the region. Um, it take, it was a place where the tribes gathered annually uh, during fish runs, and it was also a site of a massacre in seven, 1676 and a reconciliation ceremony in 2004. So for thousands of years, the area um, of and around Great Falls was a place where all were welcome. And um, as they exchange gifts, ideas, uh, and goodwill today, uh, we're committing to a future that will continue the exchange of actions to promote understanding about and between cultures, increase mutual uh, vigilance and historic for historic preservation, and deepen our appreciation for the rich heritage of the indigenous people of our region. Um, it will continue as a, this uh, the tradition of an annual gathering, um, as they did historically. So. Um, I will say that I'd, I'd like to champion fully funding this and, you know, if the only objection was that it was in Turner's Falls, I think their reasoning that this uh, is is on a historic site for the indigenous people. Um, there, there are probably some reasons they might not feel great about coming to Amherst, so I'd much rather they be there. Um, would anyone else like to to speak to this or any questions? Yes, Cody. Yeah, outside of this, the some typos because I know one of the people the peak are not more but the small typo is really great festival. I probably will be way better encourage fully funding it also go. It's a great festival. Thank you, Cody. Yes. I, 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 my sense is probably everyone agrees about fully funding this. Uh, is, is there anyone who, who feels differently? Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Sounds fantastic. Okay, so Julia, next, yes. So it's, I'm going to steal back a minute or two because I I put up the um, ADA rules and the guidelines. Can, is that okay? Is this for well? Is it for Emily Dickinson? Yeah, I wanted to just step back because I felt bad to step away from that without resolving it a little bit. I'd like I'd still like to to bring that back at. at all right. Let's, okay. Let's, okay. No, that's okay. Let's let's get it because it probably it could relate to something else we're about to review. So we, we can borrow kind of two and too, a half yeah. minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's right. Thank just, you. Re real quick, and and you know, and thank you for. Um, Thanks for looking me. it up. Yeah, I, I just I, I felt bad because we this comes up a lot frequently. Um, so let me just read very briefly. This is the top of page ten of the um, local cultural council guidelines. Uh, non discrimination. LCCs may not discriminate against applicants or programs on the basis of age, ability, ethnicity, race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, expression, 
nationality, geographic origin, immigration, military, socioeconomic status. <clears throat> but then this is the part that um, I think we wanna hone in on. The Americans with Disabilities Act requires that persons with disabilities have access to public programs or services on an equal basis with the rest of the public. Federal law mandates that any program or service that receives federal or state funding must be accessible to persons with disabilities and there must be reasonable, this is underlined, reasonable accommodations made to provide an accessible environment. Um, all events and programs funded by the LCC must, by LCCs must consider access for persons with disabilities, including facility or event location, as well as the content of the program. To ensure equitable access, an applicant's first step is a candidate assessment and identification of barriers, uh, physical, virtual, cultural communication, followed by a bold and innovative plan for improvement. And a lot of that mirrors what we wrote in our local guidelines too. And I just want, because it's such an important question and, and it comes up so frequently with our venues, um, you know, the, the reasonable accommodation idea, I think is really well met in both in spirit and in, in reality by the, um, by the Emily Dickinson uh, project. I think, frankly, you know, when we had Charles come in and do the round table, it was, it was sort of the, um, the candidate assessment and, and bold innovative planning that he was really championing, championing um, you know, knowing that this is Massachusetts and we have a lot of old buildings and, and whatnot. Um, so anyway, I just, I want, I, that conversation, I just wanted to go back and double check. And then of course the language that's in our local guidelines, it par parallels that and then provides some other ideas as well. So just sure. in case that's helpful for to folks as we go sure. forward. Are you of the opinion that it, it meets our guidelines from, from that? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. So there was a language in the application, in other words, that addresses that, right? Because having been to the um, the venue and taken their tour, it's um, what they're talking about in terms of the accessibility concerns. That, like all of that is on the second floor, and well, which is not accessible. I so well, specifically, what I'm talking, they made reasonable accommodations. They said, first floor is accessibility accessible. Second floor um, can be accessed through an iPad that they that they give out with a virtual tour. So I thought that was a very reasonable accommodation, and I appreciate them, you know, taking that extra step of kind of bold and bold and innovative plan for improvement. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I just I wanted to recognize the efforts they made and, and certainly not punish them for that. Thank you. Now I am going to bang the gavel and move on because in, in 30 minutes we talked about three. So I, all all good points, but I, I think the reasonable accommodation would be would certainly be satisfied on that criteria. And yet we can still hope for better. Okay. So the uh, Rachel, if you have time started, I'll go with the next. Uh, this yep. is the the Valley Winds. Um, uh, USA to Mexico migration and the music of butterflies to occur April 29th, 2023 at Buckley Recital Hall at Amherst College. <clears throat> um, the budget budget is around $6,500. They're asking us for $2,500 and expect uh, about 600 people to be able to attend. Uh, we collectively scored this at a 2.21. And the only comment was asking if if this is the same project as the other one and is it okay to pay for both i'm not sure what what that meant because it doesn't list which other project but there was maybe a project with children and, and butterflies um that uh i don't know if it's related um or, or perhaps this is the music part and um and they've applied separately uh so the Valley Winds, um, they're partnering uh, with Dartmouth by joining the Mexican Composer Incubation Project, and um, it will increase exposure uh, and representations of Mexican composers by commissioning and recording works uh, for the Mexican repertoire collection. Um, in addition to featuring these Mexican composers, they're performing a newly commissioned work uh, by Nubia Don Juan, inspired by Anne Hobby, Hobie's children's book about the migration of monarch butterflies to Mexico. So children ages four to 12 from the Pioneer Valley will be invited to create artwork in various mediums to illustrate ideas and feelings from the book. And this artwork will be incorporated into their creative performance. The project promotes awareness um, of our delicate environmental balance and highlights our relationship with our Mexican neighbors through music, visual, and visual art. So uh, reading through this, yeah, this um, is uh, 
definitely for that that same event and um i i i don't think there's a problem with the guidelines in this in this case because one part of the event could have gone on without the other um and i i, I think it really is two different groups who are coming together and collaborating and i think this actually satisfies our new guidelines saying you know, regional collaboration and, um, you know, diff different groups working together. And it, we certainly for the artwork thought that it was a win-win that they'd have an additional audience because of the musical performance. But if anyone else sees that differently, please, who would like to, to speak to it? I think I put in my notes that the children's art component was not very clear um, in terms of how that was going to be implemented, but I think you already you already mentioned that, Julianne. Uh, yeah, but I think when we discussed the the children's art, um, you know, it was participatory art, right? And and that combining it with the music and bringing it to life that way and getting it a bigger audience seemed to be, you know, as far as. Um, you know, value to the community uh, was only in increasing, you know, for all parties involved. Um, it, it seems to me like a big ask for this. I also, I found some of the line items in the budget a little um, questionable. I mean, they're having it at Amherst College. They need to pay to rent a projector. Why is that? I mean, if they're if Amherst is hosting them, Amherst has projectors everywhere. Um, I I think it's a fine project. I would I would do somewhere around fifty percent support on this. Um, I think this is another case of the Amherst College Amherst partnership. Um, where I sometimes feel like Amherst College doesn't hold up their end of this. And I would support part of it, but not all. Yeah, I, I am at the same time here looking back at the multi-arts group and, and their companion um, application where you know they were asking for $850. So if you look at the total budget, both for the art and the music, it's getting to be really, you know, quite quite large I and mean, we we can handle them separately um did they not uh, I, we should look did they list any kind of in-kind donations that are coming in or was it very much having to to pay everything at um Amherst College so the space rental for the rehearsal is 585 and for the concert venue is, is 700 which as far as space rental is not but you know particularly expensive um does anyone understand how, how that works over at amherst college um people coming in and i'm also curious if we had a letter of support specifically like um from amherst college about it i'm sorry i don't understand that i wish i could speak to that but I'm sorry, what did I, where did I confuse you? Oh, the, oh, the cost? Yeah, I was, I was saying, no, no, you didn't, you didn't confuse me. I was just saying, I wish that I could help with the, like, when people come in thing, but I'm not sure. I actually um, put in my, I think when I voted for this, I would support like 25%. So I, up to 600 of this amount. Um, so Christy, that's kind of half of what you're, okay with <laughs> yeah i just I, I mean i do have some quite you know this came up i don't want to go back to the dickinson one but it came up with the dickinson one as well and i i do understand the partnership um aspect of this and it's important but i i do think that that there are some things in these budgets when for charges that don't seem right to me. So anyways, Robin just saying, you know, 25%, 50%, but I wouldn't give this um, the full amount asked. 
is there anyone who feels strongly about supporting it? Uh, I do believe Valley Valley Winds is a group, you know, that uh, is, you know, does request grant assistance annually, and I think we've been pretty consistent with helping them out. I I'd have to look back to see if we'd ask anything this large. Are you? Do you have your hand up for time, Rachel? Yep. Okay. All right. Then we will we will move on. You're muted, Julia. Thank you. Okay, so we'll we'll move on then, and I I won't I won't put a number down for this one just at the moment. Um, okay, so sorry, I may have lost my place again. Thank you for your patience. Oh, I found it. Okay. So the next one is, um, oh, I wish someone else would say this name for me. Uh, Fungai uh, Tichawa Ghana, sorry. Uh, and the pro project is Literary Massachusetts. And um, the project has already launched and is currently self-funded and it will be document, uh, an ongoing documentation of the literary arts in Massachusetts. <clears throat> it's it's for a website called Literary Mass. Uh, their total budget is 3,000. They're asking us for the total budget of 3,000. They expect it to serve 15,000 folks. Um, and the comments were, it sounds great, it's a lot of money. Someone else said it's a, a small, small grant. Um, I was not inclined to support at all, but oh, oh, suggesting maybe just a small grant, but after looking at the website, um, which and, and the included materials, it gives a better sense of their uh, vision. Others said very large ask. Someone said potentially a model for accessibility. Another person said it's a large ask, but we should try to support it. So, what are they doing? Um, the uh, funding would cover the payment of writers to interview authors and historians who live in Amherst or who have uh, knowledge of Amherst authors past and present. Included in this uh, would be work to help shed more light on the historic work of African-American writers who have been associated with Amherst Mass uh, to include James Baldwin, Maya Angelou, and others. So is there anyone who'd like to, to champion this event or the website? I was, I was the one who said that um... I wound up poking around trying to sort of figure out what it was. It's such a large ask and such a sort of amorphous, not amorphous, but the description was not super concrete. Looking at their website, um, I, I do see that there is some real, you know, thought and, and some pretty powerful um, names and, and, you know, there, there's some really good content there. There's a, a lot of sort of content aggregation also going on on that website. And um, although I personally like the, um, uh, I'm sorry, what was the, the newsletter for the newsletter for kids or for, you know, events for kids. There's an element of that here too, where it's a lot of content aggregation. There's some content creation. Um, right? I think it's, I, you know, I think it's something that has legs. It's already in existence and there is a vision that's being developed. So I would not deny it outright, but certainly, you know, I, I would, I would, you know, a 20, 10, 20% type um, grant would be my recommendation. You know, I would add this is a, a local resident applying. Um, you know, I I think anything that you know increases knowledge of of folks who have con contributed to arts and culture that were overlooked is is important. But I, I'm with Matt as far as the amount of funding. I always, you know, to see in the the budget is two thousand one hundred thirty dollars payment to writers and interns. I'd love to see more. Um, you know, writers paid certainly, but without knowing, you know, to just how many people that stipend goes, it makes me rather uncomfortable to 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 give. Yes, Christine. Um, I mean, I I um, when I read this, I'm like, why why is this? When you have something like this, I want to know why is this project needed? Who what what is you know all of the the um, the writers that they have in so far are hardly are completely known authors. I mean, it's not um, 
new research into its it just so that worried me like why you know who's the audience for this is it to tell people that Amherst is an academic town or a town of writers and historians I don't think that's really a a huge need in the town Um, and the other thing that really worried me although I do know some of these people quite well it's like they're not even really organized yet into an organization Um, and that seemed a little worrying to me 10 percent 15 percent as Matt said I'd be fine with but I think there's just um I have too many other concerns with it. Thank you. Uh, Cody? So many two comments. One, you know, look, it sounds we may need to request and I it's told in why people do what they do to avoid confusion. Also, yeah, I support a low funding amount at 10 to 15 percent. Thank you. Thank you. you know, Matt, as far as, you know, I, I have not had the time to go and review their their website, you know, is, is $300 meaningful from what you looked at there? And as far as, you know, their answer, you know, was that they are also looking for other grants to apply for regionally and nationally. And that if they didn't get the funding requested, they would grow the site at a slower rate until they can access more more funding. Um, so it, they did not say that they applied to any other local cultural councils, but, uh, I mean, the site, the site's up, it's not going to go away if we, we don't fund it. So it's a matter from my perspective of what's, what's a meaningful and responsible amount of support to, to keep, to encourage them. I, I just want to indicate one thing in the application is that they did, um, show an anticipated $5,000 cultural sector recovery grant. And those, you know, that money was um, moving pretty quickly. I, I don't have a great sense of who got it, but I know there was a lot of grants flowing there. Um, and I'm not, I guess that doesn't affect us one way or the other, other than somebody, you know, somebody pounced on a significant chunk of um, re- recovery money that was out there. Um, I think, you know, this is a, this is the Amherst centric part of this is um, them trying to make the case that, you know, that there is a local thing really it's supposed to be a statewide website apparently um so i in terms of meaningful to affect their mission i i'm not sure that i can really speak to that I, I think it's the sort of thing that we as a local council we would you know we, we want to maybe attach some support and some kind of attach our name to it to some degree just as as a thing that you know that represents the cultural activity of our town um but i yeah i, I you know even even having read into it a little bit i I can't get too enthusiastic behind supporting it um, significantly. I think we're at time, Rachel. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Okay, our next grant is uh, from Roger Tricknell and Children's Songs and Singing Games Family Concert uh, scheduled for October of 2023 at the Amherst Community Child Care Head Start. Um, they're asking for $500 on their total budget to benefit 100 projected audience members. As far as how we scored this, um, this was scored as a 2.5. So there was a lot of strength here with it. So um, Ticknell, um, is, who applies for us to for grants annually with us, would perform a one hour concert uh, for the Head Start children and their families. It's an interactive program, includes a variety of multicultural songs from around the world. Um, there's imaginative journeys, creating song lyrics, um, imitating animals, learning words and phrases from different languages by singing call and responses uh, in Spanish, Polish, Russian, Swahili, and other languages. Um, 
They also, uh, the songs also reinforce common core standards in language and math skills, developing um, skills for rhyming, counting, uh, et cetera. So uh, he performs on a variety of instruments and, um, and the audience uh, is invited to participate, sing, clap, dance, move, and play Latin percussion instruments. Uh, is there anyone who would like to champion this? Yes, Cody. I would like to champion for funding it again. I remember how we just not do what I see when this be one of my favorite ones because of the culture component and introducing the young kids to culture very early think it's wonderful that the hector is doing that and yeah thank you thank you i certainly with with your memories of the event and and how much it clearly has has meant to you i truly appreciate that and we've had other students um who've been on the council over the past couple of years uh shared that they were equally moved is there anyone who does not support fully funding this if possible okay thank you so much okay so uh the next is, um, it's a group Trans Health, and this is Trans Health and Bloomery present a QT Valley Meetup. It's an event series to take place in March and April of 2023 at the Drake. Um, they are asking for their full budget of $1,000 and um, expect to serve 200 people. And uh, the one question was, what are the performances at the Drake specifically? So this is um, the Valley's uh, LGBTQIA plus communities um, uh, are ready to gather. Uh, this spring, uh, Trans Health Northampton and Bloom Local are partnering to produce a new series of events all about uh, the intersection and connection um, uh, the series of events in is in beloved spaces. So um, here it mentioned in, in the application, it mentioned the Drake, but it's also at Hope and Olive and Greenfield, the Five Eyed Fox in Great Falls, uh, the Drake and Amherst, Quarters and Hadley, the Bloomery in Northampton, Calico in East Hampton, Race Street, Live in Holyoke, and the Hub in Springfield. Um, experience unique venues and connect with QT folks and inspire uh, inspire and be inspired by spotlights on local queer trans leaders and artists. Um, they build upon the Connecticut River's uh, web of converging channels and intricate intersections as an inspired template for bringing together historically marginalized queer and trans communities as we strive to nurture a more connected and supported uh, cross country ecosystem. Um, Collectively, we scored this um, at a 2.57. So is there anyone who would like to speak to championing, championing this event? I would champion this event. Um, I think that it's great that it's specifically for queer and trans people. Um, it seems like a good organization to me from what I saw and I really, love that kind of idea of bringing people together like the river I don't know they really got me with that description there any other comments yes Cody yeah 
I have about the first, yeah. You know, really making these efforts to bring people together in me creating awareness and it's what they really do that was all the major cities or historical landmarks in the valley. So I sat into champion. Thank you. Thank you. And I, as, as we're talking through this, I want to share that the thousand dollars that they're asking for, as far as it being their entire budget, seems to be specific to the Drake because it's a $500 artist fee for performance at the Drake and uh, another $200 for AL, ASL uh, inter interpreter and also um, the uh, Bloom Local who, who's doing promotional design and marketing. So uh, it's a much larger um, series of events, really. And what they're asking for is specifically $1,000 for the one date in Amherst. My only reservation then is it's $1,000 for one date, but I, I think we have strong support for it. Matt, were you about to say something, Rachel? I see your hands up. Matt, Matt, do you want to go ahead? No, I was, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to ask, like, in the context of, because we had this discussion last, during the last meeting about venues versus, you know, projects. Um, and I'm just wondering, as we go forward, not necessarily for this round, but in the future, if the Drake is going to continuously be used as a venue, is, is it worth our while to have some kind of understanding with them? when it comes to grantees sure. using their venue. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you know, there's a lot of money going to the Drake. For yeah, I think it would be good to have some sort of an understanding of what what their fee structure is, you know, when they're asking, you know, for space rental versus when when they're passing. So I, I think we can, we can take that on to have a better understanding for the next cycle. But for now, just have to take it on the merits of the grant. Any other comments? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll ask this. I, I'm not um, opposed to parties, but I, I am curious. I mean, I, I think parties are cultural happenings and I think, you know, that meetups are, are happenings, but I'm not, I, I guess I'm not a hundred percent seeing the, where is the sort of arts and culture component of this meetup? I was missing that a little too, but specifically, they're they're looking for a five hundred dollars stipend for the artist to perform at the Drake and for someone to do sign language interpretation of that performance and and two hundred for the marketing for people to come to that performance. So if we really kind of step back from the whole larger thing that they're describing, there is an artist that's performing for for the community and I, and it's open and accessible to the public. Um, my only other question was, was there any kind of a, is it a totally free event or does, do people have to pay to get in? I'm sorry, people are raising their hands. I'm looking elsewhere. Are we all kind of looking at? Both <laughs> time. It's free or by is, donation. It, is this the artist, Diana Alvarez? Well, I see Ocean Wong, Diana Alvarez. So we just assume, I guess, that there's a performance component of it. I guess it's we just don't not explicitly. Like, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. And I, I think, you know, they were trying to write, write up this much larger thing. Um, and maybe they were making, they also applied to Greenfield, Turner's Falls, Hadley, Amherst, uh, Northampton, Holyoke, and Springfield, but I would assume they would would have been citing a budget specific to those events, those dates, those locations. So, um, I 
I guess it, it, it's a little challenging. I think we all want to support it, but it doesn't necessarily meet our guidelines without having a specific date, you know, at, at the Drake. Um, does anyone have concerns about it not meeting our guidelines because of that? Yes, Rachel. I, no, I'm only raising my hand for time. Yeah, we're at time. Are we all confident that this, this could be within guidelines? Okay. I mean, one quick comment, and that's a good point. Are we really finding the Drake or Green Tea? Because if it's the Drake, then the app should be 200 now. It sounds well. I think it is realistic that the Drake is, you know, losing money when they have to to staff and have a totally free event, and that that's you know not not sound either. I, I I'm not concerned in this case that we're just funding the the Drake. I think this would be going to artists in the community. I think there is a performance component. Would we all be comfortable with kind of a, a high partial in in the range of 750, or is that too high? Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Eleanor. I'm, I'm fine with that level. I would actually like to reach out to get confirmation on a date, though. There's, 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 like you said, there's nothing to indicate time. time no letter frame. of support from, from them, from a, <clears throat> the venue, right? Sorry. I'm... All right. Are we good to move on then? We're past time. We should have. Okay. Next. Uh, this is. Uh, Lucy Tracis, I don't know if that's French, all right, and uh, West African Drum Workshop come out and play spring of 2023 at the Jones Library. They are asking us for $200 and expecting to serve uh, 15 audience members. Um, and the only comment was, are we able to fund someone so directly? I guess they meant as a stipend and they would say, absolutely, that's something that we do. So uh, this group is bringing in uh, teacher Jafar Mansell and the Wendell Warriors and to play a short set of West African drum rhythms. Um, then they'll talk briefly about the history of the songs played, what they mean, where they come from, and then demonstrate how to play the basic notes on the drums. Uh, then participants will participate in making the basic sounds, then one or two songs will be explored with the class and everyone will learn how to play the main rhythm plus some supports uh, in part of the, of the group format to see how all the different parts combine uh, to make the polyrhythmic whole. All drums and percussion instruments will be provided, but if anyone has their own uh, uh, African drums, the dembe, I think it said, uh, they can feel free to bring it. Um, this is great, we're recording everything I culturally don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> so, um, I would support fully funding this. This is a tremendously reasonable ask. My only question is, you know, do we have a letter of, since we don't have a date, is there anything here indicating that uh, the, the Jones Library wants them to, to come? I think they might be space limited for 15 people, but uh, otherwise I think the uh, audience would be larger. And, um, Sorry, Julianne, I put this at like I would I would vote to have I mean I know that the, the ask is quite small. Um, um, but I think I had put in like at least 50% just because they're applying to multiple LCCs. And I think there's support from the Jones as well. But I I mean I'm good with whatever we all decide. Uh well, I, I do want to note here that they said the price is usually 400, but they were, are donating 200 to the library, so they're only requesting 200 from us. And as far as um, these other councils, I mean, this is happening right here in Amherst. Um, I, I think it'd be nice because it sounds like a rather large group of, of folks. It's an incredibly small ask. I can't imagine funding them for anything less than the full amount, frankly. Um, My only concern would agreed. 
Yeah, my only concern would be, you know, uh, we've got a location, we don't have a date, and we don't have um, a letter of support from from the Jones. But you know, if that can be provided, confirmed, I'd, I'd... could you could you let it pass, Rachel? They're donating. Oh, please, bucks. yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I gotta come on camera now just for that like exchange, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. All right, moving along. Uh, we have um, Valley Art Salon, and they would like to bring Valley, Valley Art Salon in Amherst sometime in the spring of 2023. They would like to um, host this to be at the UMass uh, University Museum of Contemporary Art, and they're asking us for $400 to serve 150 folks. Um, one person asked if it could be more open to a public audience. Another person said they're charging uh, $5 for tickets. So uh, Art Salon is a dynamic social evening of engaging presentations by emerging artists in Pioneer Valley. It's been going on since 2013. Uh, they've presented in over 10 different communities in the Pioneer Valley, and it provides opportunities for a diverse range of artists to present their work and ideas in a format called Pacha Kucha. Um, and I, we've talked about that before, so I'll keep going. Um, after the brief presentations that are about six minutes long, there's an informal Q&A. And um, in 2023, it will be in four communities. Uh, and uh, featuring Amherst uh, area artists and creators, and it's a true cross-disciplinary community building event. And um, yeah, it reflects the diversity and richness and liveliness of the arts in, in the Valley. Um, is there anyone who would like to, to speak to this event? Yes, Rachel. I don't need to speak to it per se. I just want to champion it because I think the Pechkucha model is is wonderful, and um, that's all. Yeah, I'd I'd almost say that considering we've looked at doing this, you know, ourselves and hosting something that's more like a monthly event or you know four to six events during the year. Um, I almost think it's worth the $400 for us all to go and just experience it. Um, you know, when I haven't been to one of their events because, you know, right when we were planning ours, the pandemic happened. So, you know, we never went, but I, I think it will be interesting with what, what they presented before seemed a little bit more um, specific to people more so in the academic community, which all these folks are are lovely, but we were kind of hoping for something on our local level that was a little bit more playful and inclusive. But I, I think it'd be great to see one of their events in Amherst and have us be able to go and have fun and learn from it. Yes. Um, again, I, I don't see a date, but um, I, I'd say this is it's it's an ongoing and well well known event, so I'm confident in it. All agreed. I'll put it down for the 400. Thank you. Okay, next is for um, Valley Classical Concerts, and this is for their 2022-2023 uh, season. Uh, the dates for this are November 19th. Uh, that's already occurred this year and another one for May 21st. And this will occur at the Sweeney Concert Hall, Smith College, and um, sorry, and another, I guess, depending on the two dates, and the Bombic Center for Arts and Equity for one of the other dates. And they are asking for $1,000 of their $81,000 budget to serve 1,200 people. Uh, collectively, <clears throat> excuse me. We scored this as a 1.64, so there clearly were some concerns. Um, uh, one of the folks said they were charging $35 for tickets, and um, another person said, "You know, we definitely need to adjust for music totals." Uh, also, it's it's uh, not in Amherst, so 
Um, this, this group, which was formerly in Deerfield, is a nonprofit. They brought first rate performances of chamber music to the Pioneer Valley since uh, 1979. And they're pledged to presenting a mix of established musician and uh, exciting early career ensembles. Um, they present both mainstream classical music and uh, works of 20th and 21st century composers. Um, they broaden access to this great music um, through deeply discounted family and student pricing and uh, other special admissions opportunities this season. They have four concerts at, at Sweeney Concert Hall um, and two at Bombic Center for the Arts and Equity. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this grant? I don't know if I'm just rushing through things. I'll I'll speak to it as far as they're asking us for a thousand dollars out of an eighty-one thousand dollar event that I'm sure is quality, but it's not happening in Amherst. And um, I I do think that sure some some folks from our community will will go and participate, but we have a lot of music, and I I'd, I'd be okay with considering not funding this particular event. I, I think we should probably pencil it in as a low partial just because we're, you know, I think we're going to be going back through and adjusting for classical and chamber music down. And um, I think I don't see a lot of enthusiasm for the for the grant, but I also don't think that we should penalize it for being one of the last four that we review. <laughs> I said I might be doing that, but, you know, I, I also would say that um, as far as music that would that happens here i think when we'll we'll do a sort to look at music specifically and um we'll revisit this uh on on wednesday as part of our balanced budget um i don't know out of an eighty one thousand dollar budget what what's a low partial that's going to be meaningful to this to this group so personally i i meaningfulness to the end of, to the group is for me i think what i look for is you know do we want to throw our support behind it? you know and and so as you said it's a large budget although i haven't looked to see how much that is in kind um but but I, you know i think it's again again it's a regional benefit um, of a high quality you know production um and and certainly you know bombic center and or is this bombic center or Deerfield? Two, two locations. There's Bombic Center, and then the other one was at Smith College, and uh, okay, or is, or do I, am I confused? And then, you know, when you actually get into the budget, the concert, okay, I, I'm seeing extra zeros here. So it's about 45000 for concert expend, expenses and about 3100 that uh, for fundraising. And general support expenses for 33,000. Um, and that ticket sales, um, they, I guess they expect around 42,000 and donations in the neighborhood of uh, 37,000. And business businesses will con contribute um, 8,500. So it sounds like they have mo most of the budget covered. Yeah, I would, I would say it's a, it's a pretty substantial cultural event. And I, you know, I don't disagree with you about sort of not happening right here in town and wanting to have a diversity of, of different um, media or, or, you know, forms. Um, but I, but I, I would, I wouldn't zero it out. Is is two hundred too low? No. Nope. Okay. Anyone else want to speak to it? Yes, Robin. I can't hear you. Um, their projected income is more than their budget. And they only apply to Northampton and Amherst, apparently. So I don't even know why they sent they applied to us. But See, I think that's where I was going with it. Yeah. Um, if we want to say yes, we're part of the Greater Valley, you know, and we want to, you know, be part of that and support it. 
Yeah. I mean, but I don't know that $200 means anything to them. And I don't know that any of us here are comfortable um, granting much more than that. Yeah. I mean, when you look at this as a possibility that, that they, you know, through donations and tickets and everything else could actually be, you know, on the positive side of this to take money out of our thousand dollars out of our own community to give it to them when there are other folks who are making art and getting a partial grant and, you know, who, I don't know, that that's where I'm, I'm challenged. Matt, did you have any addition, additional comments? I mean, I, I can leave it at 200, but I think by the time we get to the to the voting meeting, you know, we might, it might be like, oh, how can we take money away from that that performance group? You know, we only have 200 over there, but, you know, we get into these these situations where we really do have to provide the the most benefit, and this, this would go on. So I, I can leave the 200 there and then see what makes sense. I don't think it's a good idea to zero it out. I just, I, you know, I, when we zero things out, then we put ourselves open to reconsideration meetings. We're gonna be hard pressed to say that, you know, classical music that we're, that we're funding in, you know, um, Belchertown is more culturally vital than than this in Northampton. I, I mean, I hear, you know, I think you're making, you're all making valid points. I just would caution against zeroing it out. All right, let's let's leave it there and you know and we definitely are looking at music again so uh we'll consider it then thank you okay so with that um i have our our next application for Lori wall she has chair yoga dance movement and breath work for all uh this will be at the bangs community center which i think is synonymous with the amherst senior center um she's requesting uh Five thousand dollars, which is the total budget to serve one thousand people uh, collectively, we scored this um, as as a one point five seven. Um, so, so with this, um, it uh, the questions were uh, one person said it sounds like a commercial venue, uh, five thousand dollar ask, and many classes. Uh, what about quality? Is there quality here and quantity? It, it seems it seems like this person is is basically looking for a job for the year. Uh, someone said to not fully fund it. So uh, this instructor would be teaching two classes of chair yoga, dance movement, and breath work each week and uh, free to the community in the Bangs Community Center. And that it's accessible to everyone, regardless of age or ability, um, and that um, seniors and members uh -oh. Did, did we lose Julian? Yes, I think we did. Oh, geez. Yeah. Can anybody pick up where she left off? I was, I was indisposed. Okay, she said she's plugging in her laptop. Um, okay. You discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> were we on? Were we still on the yoga, the dance yes. The yoga? Yes. Yeah, she was reading the description. Um, I can speak. The senior center does offer this class. They offer many of them. I have no idea how well it's attended. Um, 
two classes a week for 50 weeks a year. That is a lot. Um, I have no idea how many people don't go because they can't afford it, which she doesn't document. Um, but they do offer it. Each of their newsletters mentions it. So it does seem to be an ongoing class. Um, what are us in terms of public benefit though? Um, well, is does it come under the cultural council's purview, really? Um, There's also an asked payment for folks coming to the class. Um, they, it's, she asks seven to ten sliding scale from for from participants. Um, and if we were to do the at twenty five hundred dollars of the grant, she would drop the cost to participate from three to five. Um, uh, I I str I don't know what what said, and I'm sorry that my uh, connection dropped, but um, I. I, I struggle to consider, um, you know, any anything that's this this large of an ask, truly. Um, so, not to mention the nature of what it is. Yeah. What? Well, it's. I mean, I think Chair Yoga is, and I, I don't know if it's a tongue in cheek or not. She says that the bangs, the chair, and the space are provided. So the chairs are provided. So that's an in kind. Contribution. Uh, I see a. Uh, I do see a public benefit, um, but I'm not sure that it's necessarily arts and culture. No, it seems to be more more fitness, and I don't see a, truly an art and culture benefit in there other than yoga. But I don't think we're speaking to the cultural heritage of yoga or anything like that. And uh, I, I really don't think it's. It's truly within our guidelines in this case. Agree. I agree. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. So um, next we have um, Sam Wank, um, Outerwear, Which Way is the Wind? It's music. It's us. Uh, set here to be any between August and November of 2023 in a to be determined outdoor space in Amherst. Uh, they're asking for $2,200, which is their total budget and hope to serve 2000 people. Um, before getting into this at this point with with no date and no venue. Um, I, I don't believe that it meets our guidelines. Uh, if there's anyone who feels strongly that it does, uh, other, otherwise, I think we should move on. Just one second. Before I'm not we move this. too quickly, I the only Thank reason I, I feel like I read that it, you know it was the very end, so so I double check myself. It it's an installation, and so is there absolutely no sense of where this installation? Because you know, with an installation. <laughs> The date is not is not so, but is there no sense of where it's going to be done? Not, not that I I know of. Um, TBD uh, outdoor space in Amherst, yeah, Mass. Okay. Yeah, no, we can't yes. support that. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds sounds fascinating, but you know, further to this, one would have to get permission to actually install something like this, and is there a letter of support? um no there's there's nothing that's saying that the town wants this and then yeah um any other comments you can't have an install you can't have an installation without a place to install yeah. frankly you know what i'm looking at in the in the in the book yeah, um, it's it's like they would be creating almost like you know the kind of structure that you have for a swing set with banners hanging down that make sound. I think it's this is very very abstract, and no no one's saying that they want to host it, and uh, I, I think it does not meet our our guidelines. 
All agreed? Thank you. Okay. You guys are doing great to help move this along. Really appreciate it. Um, so the next one um, is at, um, this is for Alexandra Woolner. It's a poetry vending machine. Um, it's available year round at Amherst Books. And they're asking us for the total budget of $750 and they expect it to benefit 2000 people. Um, uh, comments were uh, 2.36. Uh, one person just said love. Another person said it seems to be duplicative of their the other request with the text poetry. Um, so uh, the Attack Bear Press has maintained a poetry vending machine since 2019, and it sells poems at 50 cents per piece and dispenses them in paper sleeves. Local artists or local poets, writers, and strangers are encouraged to purchase a poem and also submit a poem of their own using a QR code on the machine. The submissions are collected and reviewed by the Attack Bear Press uh, to ensure they're appropriate for all audiences. And they also encourage people to submit uh, poetry by mail or online um, through their website. And um, the process is it's reviewed and if it's okay, then it's typewritten and folded into the vending machines. Um, without funding, uh, they currently run their project at a deficit. Um, but many people have let us know that they truly love the vending machine, so they like to uh, continue. Is there anyone who would like to champion? Yes, Eleanor. I would love to champion this. Um, I think it's super, super cool. I can't believe I haven't seen it somehow. I feel like I'm at Amherst Books a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm just a big fan of it. And I know I've been very pro like all of the poetry things, but we don't have a lot of poetry, I feel like. Um, and yeah, it seems like it's kind of already thriving and I don't know, I have a lot of faith in it. Sounds like a real labor of love. I agree, yes, I think it's a great project. Um, I, I, I do as well. I, I know what Robin wants to bring up. We do need to discuss it too. And one other thing, the budget, which is 400 is for mileage. So we cannot fund that. Oh, no, we can't. So it's really 350 is what we're looking at. Um, and the other is, does anyone know if the poetry machine is in the upstairs or the downstairs? Because the downstairs is not accessible. The upstairs is. Well, it's upstairs. It, so it, it is upstairs. It is upstairs. Yes, it's upstairs. Yes. Okay. Then, I mean, I actually called the bookstore, and he said, um, "Yeah, we don't have a button for the door. If, but if you knock, you know, we'll let you in, and we'll help you, and we'll help you get the door out. And sometimes this is best, you know." As, as you know, as well as the store can do. So it's a little iffy to me if it's accessible, but you can definitely get up to the door. So one thing I think that's, you know, you know, if, if, if it's, if it's not ADA accessible, you know, if, if Amherst books, you know, under those guidelines is, is not considered yeah. that kind of business, there's an issue, but my my guess is that this is an in-kind donation of space to attack bear press right at at a venue where people can access the art so it's really not it's not their fault however we would have to assure that the business itself is considered ada accessible which i think it it must must be in the reasonable accommodation or anything else that you were reading in that statement right matt mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe so with the ramp and the ability to open the door for a person, I, I think it would be accessible. Yeah, because you go in, it's not like you stay there for five hours. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I think it's reasonably accessible. Yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable denying them on that. I, I also want to just point out that she is co-applying with... Uh, I think it's Jason Alexander. No, Jason Alexander. She's co-playing with somebody, but the other grant, he is the lead applicant on it. I just had to, you know, I double checked that. Thank you. Yeah. Then and, and yeah, there there are no guideline issues from that perspective. 
I agree. I just want to, I'm putting it down for the 350 because Robin's right. We can't um, support mileage. So on, on, it's it's a shame because my my guess is this is a real labor of love and that um, just the amount of time to read uh, and curate this and then to type on a typewriter and the expenses for the paper. Like I think all of the expenses are there, but um, we, we can't do the money for the mileage. I wanted to do a time check. We've got two minutes left. Uh, we have not deliberated gallery A3, and there are several that um, from today certainly that we would um, benefit from going back to. Um, well, I hate to ask it after a long day for everyone. Is it is it possible for any folks to stay on longer tonight? Thank you, Robin. I I can't. I'm sorry. I've got something. It's right at 7:30. You are entitled. Uh, Thank you, Christina. Yeah. No, Cody can't. Yeah. Okay. I so can. Stay, I can. I can stay five minutes, but I don't know if that would be really even worthwhile. To okay. So that, uh, Rachel, I just it, can you stay at all or no? Yep, I can stay. Okay, so let's let's keep going for for the moment because um, that that will help us. And so can thank I ask you. a question? I'm sorry, I'm in the local council guidelines, page eleven. Restrictions: grant funds cannot be used to purchase food or beverage. Scholarships cannot be travel. used for a scholarship program. Where is the mileage piece? Travel. We can't use it for travel. Where is that? Though I don't see it. Don't. You know, I haven't looked to validate that, but. Uh, I guess that's something that we we've been saying for some time. Did it did it change? Is it part of our local as opposed to regional or the or the MCC? No, I'll, it's not local. I'll um I'll look for it tomorrow. I, no, I stand corrected. It's, it is local. Travel will not be reimbursed. Okay, yep. sorry. Okay. Too bad. We never have reimbursed it. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Thank you for, for confirming that. Uh, in the interest of time, and I wanna go back to um, the gallery A3, which we couldn't have had Christy here for anyway, because she has been recusing herself for this. Um, you'll have to give it, okay, here it is. So gallery A3, um, this is their art and community, which runs uh, pretty much all of 2023. And um, these events are at Gallery A3, 28 Amity Street. Um, they are asking us for $6,520, which is their entire budget, and expect to serve 1,000 people. Um, comments here were, love Gallery A3, but it's a lot of money. Um, another person said it's a vital community resource. Uh, the funding request is very high. Um, someone else said a very large ask. and. Um, low number is not about the quality <clears throat> um but the ask is too much as, as i recall it's also there the amounts that they've been asking for over the years are, are they're on an exponential trajectory at this point i think they used to ask i don't if i look back it might have been a thousand and, and getting to six thousand five hundred which is more than ten percent of the mcc's allocation to us is simply not going to work in my opinion so let me see what I can share. It is a year long event with three components. Uh, they'll continue with the monthly members exhibitions and Zoom forums, uh, which cover a wide range of topics. And um, then they'll have a second post pandemic juried show. Um, they'll be working in 2023 on a collaboration with Art for the Soul Gallery in Springfield to take place in 2024. Uh, this continues Gallery A3's 2022 initiative included monthly forums, an invitational with five African-American artists curated by Terry Janori, uh, and the return of the juried show. And there's a draft in the final reports in the supplement. Um, so Daniel Kojo uh, Sherrods from Hampshire College was uh, one in, was their juror and is bringing new perspectives uh, and, and verve to the event, selecting artists from as far as field as Nantucket, 
Uh, because of the pandemic, we've had uh, a lot of our forums by Zoom, which has increased the audience by two to three fold over in-person audiences. I have to say, having just stumbled through that with apologies to whomever I pronounced incorrectly, I don't get a, a real sense of what this would be specifically, you know, from their description um, would, would definitely need to, to, to read the budget, knowing that we can't service anywhere near uh, that full budget. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this? I'll just weigh in briefly on my thoughts on A3 and Amherst Cinema and some of the larger orgs. I, I think they do a nice job some years more than others of representing projects when in reality, you know, we kind of just represent um, one of a diverse source of funds for these organizations. So I think, you know, we, we should fund them um, as much as we see as responsible. And I personally don't think too much about the, you know, the, the layout of the project that they're, they're, they're applying for. I just look at it as sort of one of, you know, like a funding source for them. Yeah, I think I'm in line with you there. I think they do, you know, bring a tremendous benefit to the community. And, and I mean, they really put out every effort possible during the pandemic and, and their reach has grown. Um, you know, as, as far as the work they're doing for 2024, I think that's outside of our, our current, you know, 2023 grant cycle. I don't really think we can do that for them. So uh, I'd, I'd be curious to go back to past years and, and see what the award was. And I think it you know, would make sense to you know, continue to hopefully be able to support them at, at a level consistent with a, a prior year. Yeah, I mean, along those lines, um, when you, Julian, and Matt as co-chairs kind of figure out the overall budget, um, that would be really useful to to bear that in mind because I feel like you all are already very much um, clued into okay how do we want to weigh um, these organizations and their requests um, against the other asks by the by the um, applicants. Yeah. So I think no, no, I think that I'm I'm quite confident in both of your judgments and balancing those mm -hmm. heard what you're thank saying you. about these thank you and I, I stand corrected on one one piece here which was that last year um i'm looking at that grant and they did ask us for uh six thousand two hundred sixty five and we granted them twenty five hundred hmm? twenty five hundred yeah twenty five so, uh, yeah, uh, Robin, you had comments. Just that we, last year we gave them 2,500 and I thought they had asked us for about 6,000 as well. So, and the year before- It was much lower. I think we might've given them quite a bit, but we, they had not asked them. this much. We gave them quite a bit because in that year, we really prioritized, uh, especially during the pandemic, uh, trying to to fully grant uh amherst right. located uh, groups yeah sorry i'm so sorry to interrupt i just have to run off now thank um, you that that that's been really helpful for us to get here um and we will be in touch in advance of the meeting for wednesday we have at least reviewed all of the grants so i think we're in in decent shape so thank you all for your service Hi, Eleanor. Can I just can I just add one more thing before we all sign off, which is that I um given wait, fact well, I don't think you can add. I think this is too close to deliberation. Is it potentially deliberation? Because I'm also still recording. That's fine, but you can yeah, go ahead and record. But what I was just gonna say is that um, the Mass Cultural Council has added all these other categories for um, whether individuals or organizations to apply for funding. So conceivably, as you know, you and Matt and Robin are putting together the overall budget, that's something to bear in mind. That's all. Point noted. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
Okay, with, with that, I will motion to adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you, Julianne. Thank you, Julianne. Thank you. 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 Thank you.